When working on any particular project, the project's progress monitoring and tracking plays a vital role. When it comes to progress monitoring, it generally helps us to understand at a different point of time during the progress lifecycle that how exactly your project is progressing. And with this progress, we can very well determine if we have any kind of deviations from the schedule and if we require any kind of control action to overcome them to be on schedule and meet our deadlines. That's where the matrices and graphs and reports will be very crucial to fulfill the needs of the progress monitoring and control activities to be implemented. So we will be looking into more details that how this can be done into ALM by making use of the dashboard module. friends and greetings for the day welcome back to another episode of testing in nutshell this is Nish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about the reporting part in ALM where the first tutorial we will be talking only about the analysis view in order to understand more about how you can generate various graphs what are the steps involved and also creating different reports in next tutorial being the last one, we will be talking about the dashboard page, how exactly the dashboard page can be created and we will be looking into what's the benefits of that. So in this tutorial, let's explore how the graphs and reports can be prepared as a part of ALM. So far, we have understood a lot about what exactly ALM comprises of, including the management requirements, testing, how to prepare the test cases, how to run the test cases and including a preparation and reporting a defect. But in this tutorial, we are trying to come back to the reporting part, which allows you to prepare the report at any point of time. That means it's let you to create different set of reports and graphs, which might be required to represent to different stakeholders, or probably the management, that how your progress is going on. Remember that, team, a monitoring process, test monitoring, is a process which helps you to measure the progress on the project. And this is done with help of matrices, where matrices can be a calculation, it can be a graph, it can be a, in a chart which just gives you an indicator in order to understand what exactly is happening with your progress. And test monitoring is an end-to-end -end activity. It does not really happen at the beginning alone or at the end of the project alone. It can be measured at any point of time during the execution. So it might be during the requirement gathering phase, it can be even done at test planning phase, it can be done at execution or probably later than that as well. So yes, dashboard, that's the reason it is on the top. That's like any point of time, you can come to the dashboard in order to prepare the graphs and reports. So the very first module is analysis view under dashboard, which is specially to create the graphs and reports, whereas the dashboard view allows you to view them. So let's create and learn some of the creations of the graphs here. So we have first of all two root folders available here by default. One is public and second is private. I don't have to give a reason behind that what exactly is the name would do. Public will be available to everyone and private will be restricted to the user. So you can just click on the new folder first to create a project folder. Don't forget that you are a project administrator right now Thus, you have access to both the folders, so you can use any one of them. Click on the Add button here. That is the new item to create. If you see, there are a lot of options which you can actually create using the new item. You can use a graph wizard, which is a step-by-step -step process to create a graph, or you can use a directly ready-made graph. So let's use a graph wizard first to understand how a simplified process can help us to create a graph. Now. What type of graph do you want? It's a business view graph or entity graph. Now entity graph lets you create single single uh, bars or columns, whereas business view graph can be used for multiple entities put together. For example, let's go for a business view graph and use a particular test or any particular entity which you think you want to use. So maybe I use defects, but yeah, you need to have more set of data in order to see the proper effect of the graph. Click on next. Do you want to use the current project or select multiple projects? This is where you can go for cross project reporting. The cross project reporting means you can prepare graphs from multiple projects. But right now we are just having one project. So use current project. Next. You want to add any filters specific to what you want to do? No. 
I don't want to put any filters. Next, what do you want to include in x-axis, y-axis and group by? So say x-axis is my defect ID, y-axis is the count and group by the status. So it will show me all three things. Finish. Now you see a graph populated which you can see as there is one defect ID that is one, count of defect is one and the status is new. You can always save the populated graph into your analysis tree. So click on add to analysis tree. You have created a folder. Just click save on that. If you want, you can rename the defect by clicking on this section. That's it. It's created now. Let's create another one graph using the graph wizard again, which will be entity graph. So let's go for next. And this time, let's as an it is entity, we have another provisions to select only these options. Entity is about different entities, what you have created under different modules. So go for requirements this time. And let's use a progress graph, how the trend has changed for the requirement. That means initially it was not covered, then it went to no run, then it went to fail. So go for next and click on next. Do you want to use a filter? No. If you want, you can use a filter always to you know, only show not covered requirements or only show past requirements. So you can use filters there. What do you want to do it with? So obviously group by direct cover status is the best entity to use. Now you see a graph change from the requirements. Add to analysis tree, including in the flight reservation. Save. You got one. Let's try a different option this time. New graph. So you have business view graph, which is as a part of the graph wizard. So let's use a new graph, which is a quick generation of the graph. So how do you do that? You click on this, select the entity which you want to pick up. This time let's select test. What kind of graph do you want? Uh, I want a summary graph. I want to see how many tests you have created. Give a name to the temp, to the graph. So say tests and say OK. So this time it will only give you the configuration tab and you have to go to view in order to see that. So we have got five tests and all are in design phase because we didn't go and update the status. So if you change the status, the graph will refresh and change. So it's already saved because first you saved and then you view the graph. In graph wizard, you will first save it and then view it. So let's try creating another simple graph here. Uh, that's defect, but not age graph. Let's go for progress graph and uh, give it as a name as defect. And OK. So you got another one here. We just shows a graph that on this state you found a graph which is at new state and count reaches to one. So we have created a lot of graphs here. Similarly, if you want, you can create different reports. You can create an Excel report. You can create a project report. So project report is end to end report. To do that, you can click on this and give a name to it. First of all, like my project report. Generally, this option is used to create the test summary report, which has all the information about a report. So click on this and you will be taken to the configuration option where the parent is the document and click on this button, which is to add report sections in order to include what modules do you want to capture. So click on this and select which part of it you want to include. For example, I want to include requirements and the name of it will be requirements. OK, so now you see requirement is now added to add more into the same document, you can switch back to document and click on new section. And again, select what contains information. For example, defects. Say OK. The defects are also now added. What if you want to include some more details specific to each section? Then select that module and click on add section. Now it will only show the details of a requirement. For example, I want to target on the coverages like test coverage, defect coverage, and so on, and say OK. So this is how you add a sub-segment. Similarly, you can go on and add whatever you want to add. Finally, come back to the main document uh, face here and define what kind of output do you want to export this report to. So a document report, that is a project report, we have four options to export it, either in HTML, Docs, 
doc or PDF. So we have four options to export it. So click on PDF and then click on generate. It allows you to generate because it wants to capture and extract all the information from the project in order to show you a result. So click on generate. It will start generating the report. Once it is generated, it will automatically pop up and show you the result. So as we have some of the entities, it's trying to figure out something. Yes, it is downloaded. And now you can see the project report. It has all the detailed information of the requirement, each of the requirement, what I've created. So everything will be listed here, including the coverage. If it is covered in any of the target field, for example, login, one is no run, one is failed. So all this information will be displayed, plus the defects. We have also included a section called as defects, then defects details are also logged in. So this is how your project report looks like. Additionally, even the test uh, graphs which you have created can be exported. So you just have to come to view option and you see a save button here, save graph as image, or you can even print a graph and you can even view it in a full screen mode. To exit the full screen mode, press escape and you will be back to normal mode. So yes, if you want to see the details of anything in a grid value, you can use the data grid and it will show the grid details. You can use it in a graphical manner or grid details. So you have a lot of things to do with your analysis view. Well, now after the tutorial, I think all of us understand very well that what exactly is the role which a graph report or matrices play in a project and tells us from time to time that how exactly we are progressing and what more need to be done in order to be on schedule or probably cover off any kind of gaps and deviations. So that's how the graphs and matrices can be actually prepared at any point of time during the progress of the project and even at the end of the project to measure certain outcomes. So thus, this is what is more important to be understood when talking about the analysis view of ALM in order to understand the preparation of graphs and reports. So that's all from this particular episode team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. See you in the next episode and happy learning.